Again, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to our Sunday morning service here at the Irish Baptist Church. As I was just saying, uh, you know, there's a lot of things in the news. Uh, and boy, I'll tell you what, you know, with, with uh, that information, superhighway uh, we have out there, you know, and the devil putting a bullhorn in everybody's hand and, and even good people out there. There's a lot of things. Uh, we're, we're hearing very little good news. Everything, and, and it's been this way for a long time, but it seems like bad news is on steroids. And there are some very bad things that are going on that no matter what laws are, are passed, no matter what legislation is taken care of, uh, so many of the things that are going on in the world today and in our own lives are, are spiritually oriented. They, they, the origins of so many issues that are going on you know, in the schools, where could that, where could the problem from the schools uh, be coming from? Well, you know, because our Supreme Court uh, many years ago in, in the 60s, I think it was in 64, uh, started the ball rolling downhill for God to be kicked out of the schools. And that was just one thing that was started. And then, you know, many, many other things have been talked about, implemented, brought forth, lied about, taught. Uh, and so now we're hearing about food shortages. We're hearing about, you know, the digital money. We're hearing about things. And I just want to encourage everybody to uh, don't don't let any of that stuff bother you. Um, I'm bother you to the extent that, you know, you're concerned about your family. You're concerned about your loved ones. Yes, you, we should all be concerned about those things. But to be concerned about how the world is going to go, you know, one thing that you know, we hear bad, 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 bad. Uh, but God, until God speaks, God doesn't advertise. He doesn't need a bullhorn. Uh, he doesn't need a bunch of uh, yip, yippers, yappers, and yahooers that are out there, you know, holding God up and, and dusting him off and shining him off. God doesn't need our help uh, with any of those things. He just needs our obedience. He just needs our trust. And it's one of the reasons why I just love, love, love the testimonies because, uh, because you know, when I'm, when I'm battling something or something's in my life and, and you know, is, we all know it's so much easier to have faith for other people, but not always so much ourselves. Uh, and, but if we could just have that faith also for ourselves, but see, we live in our bodies and, and we have to deal with doubt and unbelief. And uh, we heard earlier, uh, in one of the testimonies and a prayer request that came up uh, about pride and, you know, Leviathan came up and, you know, it's interesting that, you know, that word mourning is in there uh, in describing Leviathan, not just pride, but mourning comes through rejection because without pride, see the, this, this dual, this duet team, uh, this twosome of Satan and the demons, is if you're dealing with somebody who has pride in prayer, you also have to deal with rejection because that's what fuels the pride. And, and these these are tag team demons that just feed off of each other at, at our peril, uh, getting us to hate ourselves and then getting us to, well, you know, I'm not really that bad. So, you know, we, we put on a good front. We put on, you know, theatrical things in our lives. It's part of that, you know, some of our, our personality and and not really giving the Lord an opportunity or a chance to show himself strong in our lives. And and he, he'll he go around us when he has to. You know, uh, we all have had God's sovereignty in our lives. Thank God, don't you love God's sovereignty? Because, you know, we're sitting there and struggling or, or wondering or doing something. All of a sudden God says, you're never going to get it. So I'm just going to give it to you anyway. And, you know, but it's not always that way. You know, God can do anything he wants, but, you know, after salvation, we are saved by grace through faith. That faith is not of ourselves. It is a gift from God. After that gift comes, we are then told in scripture to work out our salvation. And this morning, I want to talk about, a, unfortunately, another big pill that affects every single one of us. And it's a, it's a, it's a real major issue in individual lives, in family lives, in the lives of, of, of everything that goes on. You know, uh, life 
touches life everywhere. Uh, everything, you know, uh, the foot, you know, the foot bone is connected to the ankle bone, blah, 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 as the song says. And, you know, all these things, you know, make life work. But when we became born again, Jesus came to give us a new life. Well, he did give us new life, but he came to give us this life more abundantly. And it, it all has to be hinged on him. And, and if you're anything like me, you know, I like shortcuts, you know, we learned how to take shortcuts to school and we take shortcuts and, you know, if, if you like to bake or cook and you learned a wrinkle that, you know, helps you save a little bit of time because time is so precious for us, unfortunately, in many wrong ways uh, that, you know, we find these ways to get around things. But God's word is sure. God's word is true. And he lays down, he, he leaves us, as the Apostle Peter tells us uh, about the Old Testament. He reminds, because there's both Jew and Gentile uh, in the uh, in the church, in where those people are meeting, you know, and they're trying to work it all out amongst themselves, and and you know, God's ministering uh, to all of them, and and these things, these issues come up that the Lord is 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 static he's solid in what he says he, he he can sovereignly move in each one of our lives in whatever way he wants but he has certain ways of having of getting things done <clears throat> and there's there's a big demon there's a big and i mean big area in all of our lives it's called compromise and we hate it you know it manifests itself so often in our lives in many different ways, it, it manifests in hypocrisy. I remember when I first got saved, I, oh Lord, oh, wow. I mean, you know, I didn't know what was happening to me. And I said, oh Lord, I don't ever want to be a hypocrite. And the Lord showed me I could be the biggest hypocrite on earth. You know, we all hate hypocrisy. We all hate these slips and falls that we have. You know, I, I, I've got something that, that the Lord's been dealing with me with. And, you know, it's now time for me to now do he, he's done what he's going to do, and uh, it would never even be anywhere where it was if it wasn't for his sovereignty. And so there's something. So if you have a half a prayer in your purse or your back pocket, um, just for the Lord, I don't want to jump the gun. I want the Lord to do all the leading and guiding. But there's something I need to take care of, and, and I'm just glad that, you know, that the Lord's got me there. But for all of us, you know, we all allow compromise in our lives. And, and we're going to be battling this until the day we go home to be with the Lord, because we still we've been left in our flesh, you know, over in Colossians three, if you want to, if you want to turn, I'm going to be going to several verses after Colossians three, uh, we're going to go over to Revelation 13 for just a minute, but, you know, Paul says that if we then be risen with Jesus with Christ, uh, let us set our affections. I'm think. I'm sorry. If we then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Jesus is now sitting at the right hand of God. Because again, I, I talked about that verse a few weeks ago. That if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we'll, we will be of all people most miserable. Because a lot of people that are, and I'm not saying they're not born again, but because of teachings in churches, because of blogs, because of, uh, I mean, everybody, there's a lot of wise people out there today who have no understanding and no wisdom. I mean, no, you know, no way to, to really uh, make these things applicable in our lives. They just tell you that just go out and claim it, blab it and grab it, and you got it, and God wants you because he loves you, and you're a child, and, and what dad doesn't give his children everything, and you know, there's just so many different lies out there that it, it's difficult to find the truth. There's a simplicity that's in Christ. There, there's the Lord wants us to go back to the old paths. He says, He says, those are the right paths. They've never changed. God's never changed. God is. What God says he means and what he means, uh, he says. And so if we are risen with Christ, and if you're born again, you have been baptized in your salvation into Christ's death, and now you are about, now you are risen with him in his resurrection, in his, in his baptism, in the baptism of new life. And so he now sits at the right hand of the Father. So the word of God teaches, it says, set our affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Again, it's much easier said than done. And, and all the brothers and sisters I know have this desire 
in their hearts. They want to have a closer walk with the Lord. I mean, who who doesn't? But we have to do it God's way. There, there's a way that the Lord wants us to align ourselves up to him. Because he then tells us in verse 3 of Colossians 3, he says, because we are dead and our life is now hid with Christ in God. And so that begs the question that if we're dead, you know, I hope I'm not, I don't sound insensitive, but, you know, if you go to a funeral, uh, you know, I you know, I probably, I'm going to be cremated, and I'm, you know, if they have a, a table, you know, I don't want my body there, goodness gracious, you know, pictures of ministering or being involved in the church or being with friends, you know, or family that I love, you know, that, that's, I want to be remembered for the positive things, you know, which makes us then also go after the negative things and try and fix them in our lives. And I guess not what this message is about, but there's a ton of verses that cover that. But if we're dead because our new life, our born again life is hid with Christ and God, what is the desire of dead people? Well, not much. And, you know, we, we have, you know, every American, every American in the right mind knows how blessed they are. No, you know, they have enough gumption that they've heard on the news or read, you know, in, in uh, you know, the martyr magazines that are out there or whatever, about how bad it is outside of our country in many places. But along with these blessings that we have, the Word of God teaches us that to whom much is given, much is also required. And Jesus said that if we go to save our own lives, we're going to if we don't if we save it for ourselves we're going to lose it but if we save it for christ we're going to gain our life and, and that's what this message is about because there's there's enough compromise in our life brothers and sisters i don't know what's coming you know i actually in my heart of hearts i'm anticipating seeing the lord move you know i mean I, people getting saved and because, you know, the devil, the devil controls all the mouthpieces out there. He controls all the media. And we're never going to hear a thing about what Jesus is doing on earth. But as God starts to move, everything shuts up. I mean, you, you can't, when God really moves, when, when the Lord starts to do things, it, it's, like, it's like a wildfire. Truth loves truth. Truth touches truth. Just like, just, and the devil does that, you know, with sin, sin touches sin. But for us as believers, these good things that we hear from other people, they get repeated to other people. I, you know, I heard this testimony. Today. You know, I know I heard somebody, I saw this. These things spread and, and I'm hearing good things out there. And, and a lot of it may be because I'm cutting off a lot of the bad things too. But regardless, the Lord's not going to be outdone. And he's nowhere close to closing his door on human beings' life right now. Now, there's coming a time, uh, we'll be over in Revelation 13 in just a second, you know, the thing, that element, that, that um, fashion uh, is going to change a little bit. But for right now, you know, the, the, the church is for, is still for the Gentiles. God is still saving to whosoever will and he'll continue to do that and as things get bad many more people are going to be open to the saving knowledge of jesus christ it's a great day you know if you're ernie i mean that guy's got to be busy 26 hours a day you know with people that he meets or witnesses to you know if i if i witness to somebody praise the lord but like when i'm going somewhere sometimes like everybody else i'm busy i hand out tracks you know and if they show an interest you know i'll say something to them but you know, however, you know, all of us plant, all of us water, you know, but the Lord gives the increase to all those things. So we just need, we just need to try and be obedient, you know, in doing those things. If you're not a good witnesser, then hand out tracks. You know, the, the foot, the hand's like, hey, look at me. I can do all these things. And the foot's down there going, all I can do is walk and stand. And I got that big toe thing always in the way. But, you know, the, the, the hand and the, the foot is just as important in the hand. It just has a different purpose. So here we are in the body of Christ. If you're a witnesser that you don't think you give a good witness, then hand out tracks. And the Lord will change us when, when we need to be changed. But so our, we are dead and our life is now hid with Christ and God because verse 4 really puts it together. I, I like the first A of Colossians 3, 4. 
because when Christ, who is our life, shall appear. So Jesus, and we know this, okay? I know I'm preaching to the choir here uh, for this part of the message, but Jesus is our life. And our human life, you know, God doesn't mind us having things as long as they don't have us. But that is where the rub comes in, is that there's a lot of things that we have that uh, take up more time, more effort, more, more other things that might be used better in other ways. And we wouldn't know that because the TV is never going to tell us. The commercials that are selling this garbage to us aren't going to tell us. You know, the, the, the advertisement everywhere we go is never going to tell us. The only way we're going to hear about, you know, um, there was a conversation that came up in the men's prayer meeting yesterday uh, about um, seek, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then everything else can be added unto us. You know, and, and other different people had different ideas of how, you know, we go after that righteousness of God. But that's the first thing we have to do. We have, we have to wake up in the morning anticipating, wanting to see God first in our lives. And, and you're just as busy as I am. In fact, probably many here that are, that are busier than I am sometimes. But when we get, the devil is so good at distracting us. He's so good at getting us to compromise our time, to compromise our will, to compromise the things that we know we should be doing. And we allow so many other things to get in our way. Again, the other day, I, I'm, I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm going to do this in the morning. I, I met the Lord in the morning. I, I, he was the first thing. Thank you, Lord. And, you know, and I was just like, Lord, I need to do this, Lord. I need to do this, Lord. I need help in doing this. And I sat down to do it, and I'm all over the place. I'm being distracted here, there, and everywhere. So I, I didn't get discouraged, but because other things were now starting to move forward, I put my desire aside that I really shouldn't have, you know, and, and I took second place, so to speak. You know, well, the Lord blesses us in first place, you know, He'll help us get to second place, but only if we desire to get to first place eventually. Because if we only like the salvation bus, it's broken down. I'm praise God you get on it, but it's only going to go a little bit down the road. And then, but thank God for the salvation bus. But there's so much more. There are so many more monkey wrenches we can throw in the machinery of what Satan's doing out there. Listen, God didn't save us to just sit back and say, hit me with the Lord and us to be lazy and I mean, here we are in church, two and a half hours a week out, out of our 166 hours we have, there's two and a half hours. I know we got to drive to church and, you know, and gas is now expensive and, you know, but that was always the excuse. You know, it was always the excuses. I'm too busy. I got too much going on. You know, I've got to manicure my lawn. I've got to take care of the pool. You know, I've got, I got places to go, people to see things to do, all these things. And, and God ends up taking second place. And, and He's trying to encourage us, and he waits on us, isn't it? Don't we have a wonderful God? Don't we have a wonderful Lord? You know, thank God that, that he doesn't treat us like we treat him. He's always there for us, even when we slip and fall. You know, we're like, wow. Now, and if we don't recognize the Lord, he, he's, just, he's just waiting. You know? But when we do recognize him, he's instantly back in our lives. Something's in our lives, and Father, I confess as sin, blah, blah, and all of a sudden it's gone. It's just like, and who does that? The Lord does. Somebody sent me, a, a dear saint sent me, uh, a, there's a million Derek Prince clips out there, but this particular, it was a message that, uh, that he gave on renunciation prayers, and, and he, was, he, you know, he was talking about how, you know, how they help us, and, and we've all been through renunciation prayers. We've all been through mass deliverances, not ad nauseum, but, you know, there's been a lot of them out there. But, you know, when we participate, when I participate, I get help. And, and I went through these renunciation prayers because I have to, because, because it's right. You know, we, we pick up dirt and dust and, and, you know, we seem to be, you know, Velcro people with, with bad things that are out there. It's easy to get our feelings hurt today. It's easy to get angry today. It's easy. I mean, everybody's just, there's, there's so much anger 
in the air. There's so many hurts and disappointments and grief and sorrow and brokenheartedness going on with, with children being killed and people going into buildings and shooting and, and all this other stuff going on. And that's just a microcosm of things that are going on all over the world. I wonder, you know, wasn't there a song a whole bunch of years ago uh, about, you know, that they wondered if God feels, what, you know, like we do? Does he hurt like we do? Well, I'm sure he does. But when we have compromise in our lives, let's go over to, um, to Revelation 13. We're just going to be there for a second. <clears throat> Revelation 13, uh, looking at verse... Oh, I'm sorry. I should have, I thought I had that marked down. I think it's right around 12 or 13. Uh, verse 11 of, of Revelation. Now, this is talking about a specific issue, a specific topic, but it can be applied in our lives as the characteristic or the character of this being. This is the devil, whether he's a beast, you know, whether he's a snake. You know, well, whatever in whatever way he's he's manifesting in this story, it's the devil. It's it's Lucifer, uh, either incognito or, or not caring. Uh, verse eleven: I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Okay, so obviously, you know, I've never heard a dragon, but maybe they're talking about something that, <clears throat> something that's roaring or or whatever. Uh, and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him uh, that came to the earth uh, and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast uh, whose deadly wound was was uh, was healed now this isn't a, a message about end time or, or eschatology uh, but there's a devil out there who is coming to power more and more every day and we're you know and if you're a pre-tribber i hope you're right you know and if you're a mid-tribber, I hope you're right. And if you're a post-tribber, I hope you're wrong. And then it's mid or, or, you know, but for whenever it is, you know, we're told to occupy till he comes. So that's what we should do. But there's times coming that, that we can't even really begin to understand. And I'm not saying that they're going to come even in our lifetime. You know, we've got young people here and, and I'm not sold that, that everything is over with. I'm not, I, you know, over the years, we all have just seen too many things that God does. He, you know, he, I hope this isn't a horrible example. And if, and if I offend you, let me know and I'll apologize. But, you know, God at the last minute pulls these rabbits out of his head that we don't see coming. He does things. There was a testimony earlier today about how the Lord just did something. And, and that's what God does. You know, the devil needs fanfare. The devil needs to be promoted. The devil needs advertisement. God doesn't. God's advertisement is us. He wants us to be a light. And lights don't make a lot of noise. Okay, Lights just shine. Now, sometimes out of that shining, of course, you know, we have to talk and we have to do things. But, but God just wants us to be who he saved us to be. And all the other issues that are in our life, if we're, if we're wanting to go forward with him, in his time, he's going to deliver us. He's going to heal us. He's going to take care of all the issues in our lives. He's going to take care of the financial issues. He's going to take, because listen, I mean, they're, they're talking about gas going out, you know, out of the world and, and they're talking about food, you know, being five times what it is now. I don't know. But one thing I do know is that no matter what comes, we can trust the Lord for our lives because he is our life. And there's, God, he, he leaves us these examples, God, our father. You know, in the Old Testament, there's, there's two references to God as a father, but not as a dad. Just, just as, somebody's, as somebody was saying, you know, you know, God came in the conversation like a dad would, okay? But in the New Testament, he's Abba Father. He's our dad. You know, and all the Old Testament things that he was to his people, a provider, a protector, he's all those things now are wrapped up in one as a dad for us. And there's not a parent, every parent I know. You do, you guys are the best examples, I mean, you might not think so, but what you do for your children, what you do for those that you love, and you lay down your life and how that mama bear or papa bear, you know, will come up, 
Well, what do you think about our God? He loves us more than that. And he will take care of us. And that verse I wanted to get to uh, is actually, I, I meant to go to verse 6. So let's go to 6 and 13. Uh, that uh, he opened his mouth and this blasphemy came out against God, this, this devil. And Because listen, the devil's going to come to power in a way that is going to be just beyond our thinking. We're not going to be able to think. You know, I mean, if we thought Pol Pot was bad by, by probably murdering half of Cambodia when he came to power and, and when, when Mao, you know, I was at a restaurant here a while back and, and Cafe Borgia, I'm just going to say it. There's a big portrait of Mao. You know, and I'm just looking at this thing. You know, this guy conservatively murdered 65 million people, his regime. That, that's Mao Zedong. Okay? 65 million, probably more than that. And, and when he was murdering those, these Christians left and right, and anybody that, that wasn't going to join uh, communism, you know, they went to Formosa. They went to what, what we now call Taiwan. And that was, that was Chiang Kai-shek. Shek, I'm sorry, Chiang Kai-shek. Shek was a born-again Christian. And he took all those that, that tried to get away, you know, and, and that's why you see today Taiwan being eliminated. We're hearing more and more about hands off on Taiwan, that, that big, that big Puba meeting they had, what, last week or two weeks ago, where, where 196 countries came together, and there was one country that was excluded. I wonder what country that was. Oh, Taiwan. Why? You know, they make all of our semiconductors, and you know, they make all these things. And But moving on with, with the message here. So there's this blasphemy coming out against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven, even those that are dead and gone and saved in heaven, Satan is cursing them, cussing them, and hating them because it was given unto him to make war with the saints and overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. This guy's going to come to power. It may be in our lifetime. It may not be. I don't know. I know a lot of people know, but they really don't know. They think they do. So, but as the restraining power of the Holy Spirit leaves the earth, as, as the Lord knows, he's not welcome in church after church after church. I mean, you, you, do you hear and see what's going on? Uh, with with the 501c3 church and and how the government's getting in there and the laws that are that I mean right now you know con Congress is trying to find a way to pass laws against the Church of Jesus Christ and they've got they've got a gazillion examples out there they've got them all already they've got they've got you know they're all guilty as sin they've got the evidence they've got, they've got everything but the little ones like us will you know will suffer because of that. Satan is trying to wipe out the church. And if we go home, you know, these things, they, I don't know if you ever, you know, several times in my life, I've tried to run from a demon. And when I got to the place I was running away from, he met me there. You know, they, you know, a lot of this stuff is just, you know, God allows these things because we're, we're trying to compromise. We're trying to get around things that God wants us to do. So Satan is going to make war against the saints. And there's a prelude going. See, what's going on now is a prelude. You know what a prelude is? It, it, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a trailer. You know, you ever, for, for people who watch movies, you know, they got these trailers out there of what the movie's about. Well, we're in that trailer now, of this prelude of what's coming on the earth. And I'm not saying to not exercise our faith. I believe. I mean, I, I've seen things being turned around. You know, and I'm going to continue no matter what I see, no matter what I hear, I'm going to do the best I can to trust the Lord in the prayers that I or we are praying. We have to. And, and if the Lord says, no, I'm doing something different, then I, I need to be okay with those things. 
but I don't think God's done yet. But regardless, you know, as the restraining power, as Jesus is not being allowed in these places anymore that he died for, Jesus died for the church. You know, we, <clears throat> the church is not here for us. We are here for the church. Jesus gave his life for the church, the ecclesia of God. And right now the church in this day and age, in God's economy, we're meeting in buildings and you know things like this. Pretty soon we'll be meeting in, you know, in other places. But that's who he died for. The church, we're to serve. I mean, we've already been blessed with with all blessings in heavenly places. We've been given a name that's above every name, you know, and we have, we have these, these uh, precious promises that by them, you know, we grow in this knowledge of Jesus Christ and, and, you know, all of our promises are yay and amen. And, and I mean, there's really not anything else that God can do except bow down to us and say, you know, what can I do for you right now? I mean, he's got everything under control in our lives if we allow him. But when compromise comes in, let's go over to, um, oh, where do we go? This is going to be a longer message, and, and it's, a, it's a good message, brothers and sisters, because it, it, it affects every single one of us. Uh, over in uh, 1 Kings, let's go over to 1 Kings, because when we allow compromise in our lives, what the devil's doing behind the scene is he's trying to turn our heart from the Lord. And the devil is very subtle. We know he is. You know, Paul even says, I, I'm, I'm in fear by the subtlety that Satan used against Eve to be working in our lives. He can, he can show his skirt, so to speak, and he can move fast, but a lot of times he's very slow. He's, he's, very, he's very, you know, methodic, you know, in what he's doing. Uh, and, uh, you know, we don't notice him sometimes. He hides he hides in plain sight uh, in our lives. But over in 1 Kings chapter 11, uh, we're going to see about, we now we know this story, but let's look at it from a little bit more of, of a spiritual warfare uh, foundation here uh, that, uh, oh wow, look at those words, those words came to life when I put these glasses on. Verse 1 of 1 Kings uh, chapter 11, but King Solomon, the wisest man on earth at that time. The guy that when God came to him and says, what can I do for you? He says, well, God, he says, I can't take care of all these. Help me so I can be able to take care of these people. And, and what did God do? He said, wow, what a guy. He says, yes, I'm going to help you with that. And then God gave him a blank check. He didn't ask God for the blank check first. And then God, if you give me this, I'll make sure to help you over here. He went to serve God first. This was the wisest man on earth at the time. Very important for, for this message. But he loved many strange women. No jokes here, okay? Uh, this word in the Hebrew uh, means alien, you know, foreign, or harlots, those that, those that will give their bodies for whatever pleasure they can get from Solomon. So he loved many of them, uh, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, the woman of the Moabites, the Moabites, Sol Solomon, the wisest man on earth, had something to do with the Moabites. These people are, these people are evil. They're, they're one of the greatest enemies of, of Israel uh, in the past. Uh, they are descendants from Lot, and uh, they are into sexual depravity that is not really talked about. You know, there's, there's laws against it. Well, actually, some states are now passing laws that it's okay, but, you know, there's still laws against it. And, and these were the Moabites. Okay? And, and Solomon, who had everything that God could ever give a person, started to compromise his life. In a way, and we all do. I mean, listen, every one of us compromise, but to what level, you know, are we going to allow these things? Because look what happened. So he loved many strange women, uh, first women of, of the Moabites who were just head over heels 
uh, involved in sexual depravity. And, and, and this is on earth right now, this sexual depravity. You know? And, and oh, several months ago, I came across a site that I, my, mouth, my mouth was on the floor. I don't remember where it was. I didn't bookmark it. But wow, did it go into great detail of what's really going on, sexually speaking, with all the depravity going on. You know, and and it, I mean, it was just like steps. To, it was just one right after another. Very, very interesting stuff. Really woke me up to how, how bad some of this stuff is out there. Now, we all deal with these things, but as long as we deal with them, it's okay. It's when we don't, because this is what happened with Solomon. You know, he, he, allowed, he allowed the gals from the, from the Moabites in there and, and, the, and the Ammonites. Oh, wow. Once again, the Ammonites, they came from Lot also there. They are grandchildren of Lot. Uh, and their chief idol, in addition to the sexual depravity, their chief idol... The one that they serve, the one that they live their lives for, the one that they look to for morning to noon to night in their lives is the one where they sacrifice their children, Moloch. So this wisest man on earth is now trying to hook up with the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Edomites. The Edomites, that they are the descendants of Esau. And with what happened with, with his father's uh, nakedness being uncovered and, and once again, sexual depravity. It, sexual depravity seems to be the foundation of a lot of the demonic, if not, not maybe not all of it, but so much of the demonic that's out there. It, it, it's a weakness that human beings have that we, we have to deal with as often as we have to deal with it. The problem comes in is when we don't, like what's happened here with, Sol with, with Solomon. And so he hooked up with the, uh, the, Edom uh, the uh, Edomites, the Zedonites, I'm sorry, the Zedonias. They just worship Baal, okay? They, they love Baal, but the goddess uh, of that uh, with Baal was Ashtoreth or Ishtar or Easter. And, and what's the foundation of, of Ashtoreth? And well, it, it's sexual lust. It's, it's Easter is about the resurrection of Jesus Christ is about eggs. Oh, I love her. I, I love like, uh, we used to call them Jesus is Lord eggs, but you can call them devil eggs. And, uh, you know, I like them. You can make them in all different kind of varieties and, and they're real good. But, you know, what's with the eggs? And why are rabbits so popular at Easter? What, is, what do rabbits have to do with Jesus? So forth and so on. Well, rabbits reproduce. They are always active, uh, so to speak. And, and Astaroth, didn't she, didn't she come out of... Um, Oh, the Tower of Babel. Well, didn't didn't the son marry his mom or something? I, I forget. I, you know, sometimes oh, this stuff just gets jumbled in my head sometimes because there's so much bad stuff with it. So Solomon did this also. He 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 was with, and then he went with the 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 Hittites, you know. And, and the Hittites worshipped Canaan. Uh, they were no, they were from Noah's, uh, from his grandsons. Uh, uh, Linity uh, line and 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 that's where the curse of slavery and and the evils of that comes. And Solomon, who knew better, did all these things. Verse two of First Kings eleven of the nations concerning. Okay, I'm sorry. So he loved all these women uh, and uh, the Moabites, Ammonites, Hittites, blah blah blah. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said. Under the children of Israel, God said something. He said, you shall not go into them, neither shall you come in, neither shall they come in unto you. In other words, it's a dead end both ways. For surely they are going to turn away your heart after their gods. 
And that's what's happening today. All well, I mean, all over the world, but you know, all over in Christianity where it shouldn't. And 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 it it can happen to everybody. In fact, it probably has. And I mean, you know, this this is a topic that nobody can really throw stones. And the main thing that the Lord wants to hear is that Lord, man, I messed up. Lord, I don't want to be like that anymore. Lord, that's wrong. See, God just needs to know that He has some soil to plant you know a seed that that will benefit something in our lives he knows how bound we are in different areas and this message isn't about sex this message is about compromising this is just one of i probably got 25 topics here of compromise from the word of god this is just one that happened to a guy i mean of, of all the things that i've ever allowed in my life most of the time i knew better i'm sure a few times i was deceived but I'm just going to admit, and I'm sorry, and go ahead and fire me, throw stones at me, I don't care. Sometimes I've sinned willfully, okay, and I'm sorry, I have, and I'm sorry, and I really am sorry, and I'm really dealing with that. I mean, the Lord's really helping me in so many areas, but this is all of us, and, and, and in any of these things that ever happened in my life as a Christian, he's never left me. No, I mean, he's, he's never even took a sabbatical you know when i got to the other side of the dirt you know there was the lord just always there because he loves us that much he knows how bad we are and this is why compromise is so hard when we allow this in our lives because again i'm just talking about one area here i'm not even not just even one area there's so many of these things going on let's move on so um so it, it, there, he said, if you, if you do these things, and we're very weak in that area, but we are with food also. You say, how do you know that? Well, I have a mirror, okay? And uh, so it's going to turn away your hearts after their gods. And Solomon cleaved unto these in love. So again, I mean, just like, just like um, Adam, you know, when, when we get to heaven, we can go up to Adam and smack him in the back of the head and say, well, what were you thinking? You know, <laughs> but truth be told, we'd we'd be the same. We'd do the same thing. You know, and Solomon. I mean, ah, Solomon. You know, and it cost Solomon everything. By the way, so verse three, and he had, and we're not going to make any jokes here. And he had seven hundred wives, princes, three hundred concubines, and because of this, these wives turned away. They made him compromise. They turned away his heart. And out of our heart, um, uh, Proverbs 4 teaches us, come the issues of our life. And we all know that good and bad can come out of the heart. But like most things in our lives after salvation, everything's a choice for us. And I'm not throwing sticks, stones. I, there's absolutely... God is my witness, no guilt, shame, condemnation in any of these messages, because if I did, I would have to be at the front of the line, okay? I wouldn't have to point my finger at anybody because I got the three pointing back at me. I'm just saying that this compromise took this guy who loved the Lord and did, and did wonderful things for God and God's people here on earth. And because of, of, because of this one bend, and, and there's a million more before, you know, before this, thing this message goes away uh, that this hurt him so bad that it fragmented his soul he allowed these things to fragment the way he thought the way he felt the way he acted the way he reacted and again we can all look back and say what were you thinking but like i said you know we would all be this same person but he did this and it turned away his heart from the lord and that's what's happening unfortunately in a lot of christianity is that We've got so many distractions. I'm not talking about just sex. Just, you know, this message is going to touch so many, many things that the Word of God talks to us about in our lives. You know, like, like Solomon, of all, of all the guys, like Solomon wrote, there's a time and a season for everything. But that's why Paul said, he says, all things are lawful unto me. He says, but all things are not expedient. He says, all things are lawful unto me. I can do whatever I want, but all things are not beneficial. And it just seems like today 
there just isn't a lot of that teaching out there that that God has put hedges around us. God has put warnings and 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 fences and things around us trying to help us. But because God, because the second greatest blessing, in my opinion, since after salvation, uh, is volition, is, is free will. God gives us he. I, again, I don't get. I have a hard time getting my head around it. How he could allow and send his son to do what he did, for you know, to fulfill his own righteousness, and then and then save us, and then leave up the rest of that up to us. I mean, God can't trust us. The Word of God says that you know, God can't trust us with anything. Yet He gives us a free will. He wants to know those that are serious. And brothers and sisters, we've got days. And they may be years ahead of us, but we're already, all of us are feeling the pinch. But it's okay, brothers and sisters, you know, life's not over. You know, thing, things are still going on and, and I, I don't wanna get in, into the political side of this. You know, we've just not heard from the Lord yet, but I'm convinced, I'm convinced so much that I'm convinced that no matter what's going on in our lives today, no matter what wrong, no matter what bend, no matter what weakness we have in our life, that God is bigger than all those things. And, and, and if we'll just let him know that we don't like that, that, that's what he wants to know. That's why we have 1 John 1, 9. You know, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Well, he already forgave our sins at Calvary. But what that is basically saying, first off, it's telling us that, that you know, if he forgives, we need to forgive, okay? We, and, and we need to forgive ourselves in these faults and failures that we have because every single one of us has these things. These are things that until we get home, we're gonna be dealing with. But moving on for just, there's just a couple minutes left here for the message. So, um, so his, his heart, the way he was, you know, you ever meet somebody and say, what happened to you? What got into you? What, what, what's biting at you? What, what, what's possessing you? You know, people that, what, what's happened to people, some people that we knew? What, what's happened to them? Well, I mean, no judging because we could all be down that same road also. But what's happened to them? Look, look what we have before us with spiritual warfare and deliverance and and we can't change God's mind, but we can be we can be faithful to talk back to the devil. Can you can you imagine the devil sitting there? Nobody ever talks to him. Jesus did, but no Christians, no teachers are saying talk back to him and tell him to shut up and sit down. He, nobody touches this guy, and he has free reign. And and we know these things. And and brothers and sisters, no matter what comes tomorrow. If we're trying to walk with the Lord, God will build a land of Goshen around us that these things won't bother us. We'll be able to trust the Lord. Yes, is life going to change? Yes, it is. And come on. With everything that's been allowed in the world, you know, to complain to God of his judgment that we might see from time to time, real quick, just to finish off this part of of the message. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect or mature with the Lord, his God. See, there were a lot of other gods out there, but the Lord, our Lord, was his God, as was the heart of David, his father. Oh. So it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as was the heart of David his father for Solomon went after Ashtaroth that that that's the Easter demon that's out there that's that's the fertility god the goddess of the Zidonites and after Milcom oh Milcom Milcom oh Milcom that is directly related to, oh, I'll tell you next time. Um, the, he went after Milcom, the abomination, the abomination. 
of the Amorites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord as did David his father. And that's just, that's just a warning for us that, you know, no matter how smart, no matter how, many, how good we are, you know, the Lord's looking for the base things to confound the mighty. He's looking for those that think they're nothing to confound those that think they are. You know, he's looking for those of us that, you know, like the first beatitude. I know you all hear this a lot from me, but, you know, I, I repeat these things like Peter did. Peter says, listen, I know you know all these things. He says, but I'm just trying to establish you in the present truth. And the present truth is that, wow, you know, outside of these walls, something's going on bad out there. But we don't have to get caught up in it. We, it, you know, it's going to affect us, but it's going to affect us in a way to get closer to the Lord, for God to show His power, for God to say, "Watch what I can do." We know the stories. We love the stories. You know, the pillar of fire by night, the cloud by day, the, the you know, the Red Sea, and and you know, on and on and on. And it's coming to me about the um, uh, mill common, and that's when uh, uh, the, the children of Israel they were. Uh, fornicating everywhere and 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 I, I believe this is this part of the story when um god told moses get the judges and you hang all these people i want all the leaders of israel hung i want you to kill them so that's what moses did he went to the judges they hung all these people uh, and then one of the children of israel brought in one of one of these whores uh into the camp and phineas the uh uh, the son of um, Eli took a spear and this guy is just totally, I don't care what God says, like a lot of people in church, and he took this spear and he ran into him and ran that spear not just through him, but through her, killed both of them. And the Bible says, then the plague was lifted. God just wants to know how we are about a lot of this stuff, Brian says, he, listen, he's our only help. We're not going to get help from the Republicans. We're not going to get help from the Democrats. We're not going to get help from the social world that's out there. You know, there may be an ideology where we bend a little bit here and there, but our help's going to come from the Lord. He doesn't want us involved in a lot of these things. He just wants us to trust. It's good. You know, these things are nice to know about because we can talk. To, sometimes you can't talk to people about the Lord. You have to. You know, you bring something else up, which might then open up a door, you know, about the Lord. But, you know, these are the things that the Lord, you know, wants us to focus on because, you know, I don't know. Again, I really believe, I want to believe, I am going to believe, you know, that the Lord's out there doing a bunch of good stuff like he's always done in the past. We read about the revivals. You know, we read about when bad comes and, you know, God's people are waking up. People, listen, there are a lot of people that are shaking their head out there with the with the price of food and the price of gas and the lies and the blatant lies. And that's all, it's a plan and it's not for this message. So, but so if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, make sure you ask him to come into your life and save you from your sins. That's the most important decision you will ever make in your life. Uh, that's where you will choose where you will spend eternity either with the lord who will be peace forevermore on that happy golden shore he he's he's the prince of peace he's the alpha and omega of our faith beginning and the end he he's our life or that other life which will live forever but not where as it came up in the testimony most are going on that life net i mean how do you get your head around that most aren't going to make it so make sure you ask him to come into your life and save you from your sins. Lord Jesus, I've never asked you before. I'm asking you here now. Come into my heart, my life. Save me from my sins. If you do it, if you'll do that, he'll do it. He'll come in. He'll save you from the inside out. But if you're driven, harassed, and tormented, this is producing a compulsive behavior in your life, slowing down, stopping, or turning around your spiritual growth and progress, demons, they hate us. They hate everything about us. They hate your families. They hate you. They everything. Uh, and so Jesus gave us a remedy over evil spirits. He says, these signs shall follow them that believe. We have it on the wall. Uh, they, we shall cast out devils. At least we have authority over these things. But never forget the two that came back. Jesus sent them out two by two. Woo! They were jumping up and down for joy, the Greek says, because they because the devil because the demons were subject unto them. Jesus said, Yeah, that's cool. He says, But you want something cooler? He says, Rejoice over this that your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Wow. So 
love y'all. Uh, and as I say, after all the services here, there in the air, if anybody's here at Hagwish and you'd like to get some prayer, um, Brother Brian and anybody else going to help out. Uh, if you're here for prayer, we've got people here to pray. Everybody on Zoom, I love you. And uh, Lord willing, as I say, here, there, or in the air.